This is lecture five in week six, uh, part two of the lecture. And in this section, we'll just be covering critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure is an enormous field. And understand that this is not a comprehensive um, course on that. It's simply a familiarization. So once again, my goal is to make it so that you have some level of familiarity with the concepts so that you will succeed in your respective public safety field. And really, for, if for no other reason, to be you know, familiar with the terms and uh, to be able to in intelligently engage um, someone on the topic. To that end, uh, here is an item of note. You may hear critical infrastructure called CIP, which stands for uh, Critical Infrastructure Protection. And in fact, even more recently, it's referred to as CIKR, which stands for Critical Infrastructure and Key Resources. In fact, if you go through the FEMA materials that talk about CIKR, just know that in the field of emergency management, it's one and the same as CIP. CIKR and CIP, they're the same. Uh, FEMA provides this definition relating to critical infrastructure. Crit uh, critical infrastructure are the assets, systems, and networks, whether physical or virtual, so vital to the United States that their incapacitation or destruction would have a debilitating effect on security, national economic security, national public health or safety, or any combination thereof. So that definition points to the assets and systems that contribute to our physical security, our economic well-being, public health, etc. So naturally, uh, the term critical infrastructure conjures up these types of images here. But bear in mind, it can also include banking systems, electronic defense systems, and other cyber-related resources. Today's references to critical infrastructure is vastly different than it was just even a decade or two ago. For instance, were you aware that the connectivity that you enjoy via the Internet across the world is accomplished through undersea cables? What you're looking at here is an open source map of fiber optic cables that lay on the ocean floor that connect one continent to the other. In 2006, there was an earthquake near Taiwan that resulted in a submarine landslide that broke cables as it flowed down the seabed. Commerce, travel, communications to Southeast Asia significantly uh, were impacted, taking 11 ships. 11 of them, 49 days to repair the damaged cables. Despite most of the traffic being rerouted immediately, internet delays were apparent for two months after the earthquake. Imagine your life without the internet for two full months. And in 2008, a ship tried to moor off of the coast of Egypt in bad weather. It cut the undersea cable, causing internet blackout for India, Egypt, and the UAE. Phone and internet traffic were immediately slashed by 70 percent. These cables are connected on land at undersea cable landing stations. So right here is a picture of one of them. You probably aren't going to just walk in, but it doesn't appear to me to be impenetrable. Uh, and as I said, the locations appear to be open source, so they're not too difficult to find. Thank you, Google. In fact, here's a landing station in the UK, and as I said, it, it's not exactly an impregnable fortress, although that um, cattle-style gate right there is probably made out of high-quality steel. My point here is that critical infrastructure can take many shapes, many of which we are not aware even exist, and damage to them, whether intentional or not, could be catastrophic to our way of life. Common to the emergency manager's world is the term THIRA, which stands for Threat and Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment. Emergency managers themselves, or staff that they work 
closely with may conduct a thyra. We know that each city or state has limited resources and every dollar spent for the purpose of national preparedness must be accounted for. An important part of an emergency manager's position is serving an advisory role to governmental executives about where that next dollar should be spent. The emergency manager is, by all accounts, the subject matter expert, and the city manager, mayor, or other official will likely call upon that person to describe why exactly the next 10000 or 100000 or $1 million should be spent on a given project. One method for making that determination is a thyra. It is a standardized risk analysis process that is employed every day to help communities determine where to put that money. Here's the uh, actual thyra process. So the first thing that happens, as noted here, is you have to identify the threats and hazards of concern. So in other words, what is of concern to that specific community? Second, they give the threats and hazards context. So you have to answer the question, how would um, a negative event or how would it negatively affect the community? Is it a life and safety issue? Is it, uh, would it affect the actual identity of the community? Is it an irreplaceable asset? It has some historic value that can never be, um, never be replaced. The third thing that has to be done is you have to establish capability targets. So, using the core capabilities of the National Preparedness Model, how does each of these meet that goal? So, in other words, looking at those core capabilities, can we match those, or what would it take to match those to keeping these sites safe? And then lastly, of course, you apply the results. So, you have to answer the question, okay, what would we have to do to make it happen? This is where there's sort of a cost-benefit analysis applied. The thyra is only one tool to evaluate risk in the community, but it is commonly used among emergency managers nationally. As I mentioned, being familiar with threat assessments is a regular part of the job, but it can become extremely technical, which means that it can be advantageous to have staff that conduct the assessments, assessments on your behalf. At some point, structural engineers, um, IT specialists, Ecological specialists are all personnel that may be needed to get the best answers about the realities of threat and vulnerability assessments. Gone are the days of looking at a map, picking the most vulnerable assets based on your gut, and then just going to lunch. Spending a million dollars to further harden the police station while failing to spend just $10,000 to, to protect your city's entire water supply would be classified as a major blunder. This stuff has truly become science, and the stakes are too high to make a mistake. At a minimum, it could cost a, an emergency manager their job, and at maximum, well, we probably just shouldn't go there.